FT8 on the Icon IC7700 using a CVI cable, a external USB sound card, um, and some optical leads. All right, let's have a quick look at the equipment we're going to need. Um, I have done a video where you actually use the uh, Icon RSBA1 software uh, for the virtual audio driver and control via the LAN, um, but this one we're going to try controlling just solely. By the CIV cable and the external sound card. So without ado, let's have a quick look at the equipment we need. Right, first of all, we're going to need one of these, which is the StarTech.com 7.1 USB sound card, external card for laptop with SPDIF digital audio, which is the most important bit. Now, obviously, um, to get the signals from the radio into this, we're going to need uh, two of the uh, TouchLink cables. Um, now I've bought these ones because they, uh, they're, they're actually rotary so on the back of the radio there doesn't seem that much room so I just thought well I, I can at least maneuver the plug around to wherever I need it to and uh, then obviously the other thing you're going to need for your c command controls from any of the software you use um, is the uh, CIV uh, ICOM uh, cable um, this purely will allow you to control the radio or the software you're using can actually interpret the data that's um, on the radio into the software and vice versa. Um, this will not pass audio, um, it's just purely uh, signal information as regards uh, what the radio is doing. So, a quick clip we need two cables and we need the StarTech Com. Right, let's have a quick look then and we'll see if we can uh, get this all uh, wired up installed um, and we'll take it from there right I've plugged everything in uh, StarTex plugged in I've labelled the leads on the back so we've got two optical they're the SPDF file uh, leads going into the back of the radio um, we've got the CVI cable plugged in and that goes into the back of the, the radio on the remote which I'll just show you those okay on the back of the radio there's the SPDIF in and out on the and the CVI cable plugs into, oh sorry, let me zoom out a bit, into the remote which is just, just there, in between the RS-232 and your LAN connection. CVI cable in there, and your optical leads in there, so in and out. I've labelled them as well as I showed you. Um, so now what we're going to do, we're going to install the driver. Now, I suggest... You download it from the internet, not use the supplied disk because uh, I'm running Windows 10 and people have said that uh, there was issues um, uh, that obviously um, I don't think the disk has got Windows 10 drivers on it. So download it from the net, it's quite a big file, but uh, let's just follow it through. Do the usual, obviously read all this because that's what we all do. Yep, I read all that, that's, that's fine. I should print it as well, I suppose. Um, Installation version 1.00.0019. Next, I know we're just going to install. Um, I'll pause the video at this point, and if anything comes up that's important, I'll let you know. Okay, it's installed. It took a couple of minutes, um, and now it's just asking me to restart the computer, so presumably to install the virtual um, audio driver. So I'm going to do that. Okay, we've rebooted. Um, let's run the software. Okay, uh, now as you can see on the software, the um, SPDIF out is greyed out. Can't tick it, can't do nothing. Well, apparently the way you do it is you right hand click on the, um, the current output, choose speaker settings, which brings you to this window. And from there you then choose SPD out. Uh, one of a quick setting, uh, this is one of a setting, make sure you go down and SPD IF in is ticked and SPD IF is ticked. Um, the volume can be controlled uh, on the top here if you need to and I did just note that um, when you plug these cables in and out this one here says IC7 DF out has to go on the in and the out of this box has to go to the in on the back of the radio um, and hopefully it should work then so. 
right we've got some settings to do on the radio so if we go into uh, set and we want ACC and then we're going to go down I've already got data mode 1 set up for LAN which I want to leave because that's for the RS BA1 software so data mode 2 we're going to change that to the SPDIF okay so we'll, um, there's no other settings that I've altered in here at all we're back into that and then what we'll do um, we'll run the software and see if we can get that up and running let's give it a try um, the other thing you'll need to do is um, on your data mode so bring up your USB connection and set it to data mode well in my case data mode 2 because data mode 1 I've set to LAN so just make sure you set that correct and it should be alright then so and so now there, there we've got it SPD8 so we've got the sliders where we can adjust the volume so we'll go 50% to start with and see what that does for us right let's minimize this now and we'll set up the CVI cable for um, what we're going to go and we're going to try WSJTX for our FTA program so we'll set up the CVI cable for that um, let's just check down here on the speakers SPDF out so I've got a choice of that and those are my standard speakers and what's already built into the laptop so make sure we've selected that as the default SPDIF out um, and let's now set up uh, WSJTX okay I haven't got the radio turned on at the moment so um, right let's just go to configuration settings right standard settings call sign um, whatever else you want to stick in there really on these boxes I've ticked these boxes um, you can tick whatever you like really radio right com port 7 now that was set up when we installed the CVI cable now if you want to check that if you go down to uh, DVI sorry device manager okay check our com ports and there we go prolific usb serial com port 7 um, and that is the cvi cable right okay so we know that's correct so minimize that okay we're going to get a failure on this because we've got the rig turned on i'm just showing the defaults that i've got set uh data bits default stop bits default hardware default uh control method cat which we need um data packet full mode and split operation must be set to fake it um, audio select the default audio device so obviously you can either choose from the pull down list and select the SPDFIE in but I've set it as default so it should pick that up so we'll just leave that it is if you haven't then obviously choose it from the uh, pull down window um, TX macro is not important didn't change anything in reporting or frequencies or colors advanced um, is as it is so what we'll do now, we'll exit all this again, we'll start again, we'll pad the radio up and um, we'll see if we can do some FT8. Okay, before we run uh, WSJTX, you need to get your internal clock reference um, synchronized with some kind of a clock, atomic clock time. I use a very simple program, it's called uh, Neutron.exe, you know, it's downloadable on the net, you'll find it if you Google it, I'll put, put a link below. Um, you have to run it as administrator once you do that say yes um, gets the atomic time synchronizes you automatically and exiting in five seconds you can click there if you like um, there's some more advanced software that will actually tell you the the lag and the delay but but now let's go into WSJTX and we'll do a little bit of FT8 and just see how that works um, do you click that a few clicks on the radio right, yeah. Now I have actually um, in our configuration um, on the radio I've had to set it to D2 because that's what I set for the SPDIF in and out um, and as you see we're receiving now so that's no problem at all um, on the radio as I say uh, in your data mode set to d2 if i mean you've got d1 d2 d3 and d4 i think i've got lan on d1 
and um, the SPDF on D2. So yeah, we've got some uh, we've got some nice little uh, contacts coming here on 20 meters. Um, we'll have a quick click on one, see if we can make a contact. Let's just have a look. Oh, let's just put it to CQ only for now, so we can see what's going on. Uh, we know we're synchronized. Don't ask me how this program works. I haven't got a clue. Um, as I've said before, all I basically do is see something and double click on it. Right. Minus 12, minus 4. Um, I think I've, I got that one earlier. So, yeah, if I, yeah. so let's have a quick look. That's a special event station. So, I'll try this one here. Double click there. And uh, we're actually transmitting now. So we'll just see what happens now. See if we can make contact. Wait for a reply packet. Sometimes this works, sometimes it don't. It all seems a bit hit and miss at times with mobile. Here we go. We're transmitting again. So let's just see if we can get a reply. volume down a little bit it's a bit annoying don't need to listen to that there we go we've got a reply there from sq9 fve and as you can see here we're moving down this list of uh, standard generated messages which is it's a nice little feature of this it does it all for you basically and this is obviously the mode is FT8. So hopefully now we should get there we go. And I'll finish off now with just a 73. And there's the contact. So SQ9 FVE just made a contact. And it's just as simple as that. So yeah, you can do it without the BAS1 software. Um all you need is an external um uh, audio card um, and I've opted to as I say to go in via the um, SPDIF sockets the optical um, well I hope that helps you anyway I mean it um, I'll put links down below to where I bought the stuff from mainly on Amazon um, but yeah I mean um, give it a click and if, if you're interested in those data modes um, it's another way of doing it um, probably slightly cheaper way than actually buying the RSBI one software unless of course you want to do remote access uh, but it works, so I'm happy.